Barack Obama will mark his first 100 days in office tomorrow. His approval ratings are well over 60 percent. But in some corners of America, there are those who are voicing concern. Opponents complain that the government in Washington is being given too big a role in American society, threatening the country's free spirit. Our North America editor Justin Webb reports now from Republican South Carolina. They didn't vote for him here. And they haven't changed their minds. In a gun shop outside Charleston, they practice firing fully automatic assault weapons, legal in this state, and in a backhanded way, they salute their president. Barack Obama's been quite good for business. Yes. <laughs> it's a fact. They're running out of ammunition here. Requests for permits to carry weapons are up 100%. Mr. Obama has touched a raw nerve. When the federal government starts seizing private businesses and bailing out private businesses who, who mess themselves up, we're in trouble. That's not the federal government's job. And that goes through into gun sales because people mm -hmm. think, I need to be independent. Yep, they want to be independent, they want to be able to take care of themselves, and I think that's really the whole American culture. That view is voiced most powerfully by a man some are talking about as a Republican presidential pick in 2012. On principle, Governor Mark Sanford has refused to take the stimulus money from the central government for his state. I earnestly believe the course that we're on is going to set the stage to the trashing of the, America, the U.S. currency, and to future inflation, both of which will be crippling from the standpoint of our economic prospects going forward. And so by throwing enough money at anything, there may be a temporary jump with regard to the economy. The bigger question is, is it lasting? In some parts of South Carolina, they don't need the money anyway. But this countryside is not all bedecked with flowers, and the president's determination to tackle poverty with taxpayer money is saluted by his supporters here. Angie is a convert. We visited her before the Democratic primary when she backed Hillary Clinton. We are just not ready for African-American president. I'm just so now she says Obama's her man. Where are the American people going to go? Where are we going to go? You know, if you lose your home, you, you lose your job. Where are you going to go? On the streets? So, I mean, I think it's great that he's making it... Um, uh, you know, suitable for people to be able to stay in their homes. Yeah. Back on the governor's land, the boss is unrepentant. Mr. Sanford is spending a day on the farm. Barack Obama is the first president in modern times to have come to power without a countryside myth behind him. He does not pretend to be a small town boy made good, but it is here in the country that he is having his biggest problems after a hundred days, and it is here that opposition to him is at its strongest. The president will not be quaking in his boots just yet, but a hundred days in, a countryside revolt is simmering. Justin Ware, BBC News, South Carolina. Police in South London are questioning four men over a suspected gang fight last night in which one teenager was stabbed to death and another seriously injured. Residents described a running battle between two rival gangs on the streets near Lark Hall Park in Lambeth. Lost luggage at Heathrow Airport has a familiar ring to it, but the airport insists a new multi-million pound tunnel will dramatically improve its record on baggage handling. When complete, the tunnel will link Terminal 5 with the other terminals. Our transport correspondent, Tom Simons, looks at whether the plan will work. This is a journey deep underneath Heathrow Airport, 60 feet below the runways, where a major project could make it more likely your bag is waiting for you when you get off the plane. They're digging this subterranean baggage tunnel at a rate of 50 feet a day, weaving between underground lines and fuel pipes. The idea 